Welcome to the Beard Me and That Beard Podcast. I'm David. I'm Sam. And welcome to episode number 41. 41. And we're talking humor. Humor. Slash comedy. That bone in your arm. The humorous humor. It's very funny. <laughs> it's laugh riot. <laughs> and we're going back to printdiscuss.com and we're following the list of questions. And we're going to get into the beer. And it's from Moonraker, which we had, I think, two weeks ago. Recently. Recently. But different. This is a different beer. This is called Summer Lovin' IPA. Prickly pear and orange. And I love prickly pears a lot. I love them a lot. Well, it smells like that. Um, uh, Prickly pear, or you can call them tuna, like they do in, in Mexico. Like tuna? Tuna. Tuna or tuna? Tuna. Tuna. Because in Mexico, tuna, the fish, is atun. Like, in, like you can tuna piano. T-U-N-A. T-U-N-A? Wow. That I, yeah. smells amazing. It smel- What'd you say it was? Pear and orange? Pr- prickly pear and it orange. It smells. Exactly like that. Yeah. Okay, very so orangey, very acidic Very, very good so far. Yeah. Yeah. The smell is great, but the yep. taste doesn't taste like huh. a prickly pear or orange. It just tastes like a really, what about, what about, really <laughs> strong IPA. What about like a smooth pear? Nope. Or what about like a red? Hmm. What's the percentage? 7%. So yeah, it's yeah a, that is through and through an IPA. <laughs> yeah, that's 100% IPA. It's a great tasting IPA, but for the smell that I got at the beginning... I expect it to taste like prickly pear and orange. Like, I have a really good flavor, a good balance of both IPA. Give it fruit. another sip. The second sip tasted different than the first one for me. It's not as strong now, but that's just because my palate is used to the taste. But I still don't taste the orange or the pear. I can... Uh, the pear is a little stronger now. Have you now. had a prickly pear before? A prickly pear? Yeah. That's not a pear. That's I usually a shave pear. the pear. Do you so know what I a prickly know. pear is? Do you know it where it comes from? Which, 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 where, where, where did <laughs> From a pear tree. A pear tr- a partridge <laughs> in, in the pear tree, right? A prickly pear is the fruit on a cactus. Yeah. <clears throat> this tastes like that. No, it doesn't. This does taste. No, it doesn't. What does it taste like? What? <laughs> tastes, like a, it tastes like a pear in a pear tree in a, uh, prickly in a desert. Prickly pear does not taste like a pear. It tastes like a blood orange, a little bit to me. It's not. It's not just a plain IPA. There's okay. So I don't taste the orange. Mm-hmm. I don't taste the prickly pear. But I do taste something other than the IPA now. Mm-hmm. But it's not a taste of orange or prickly pear. Have you? Me. Have you had a prickly pear? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Like remember, Mr. Like Lasano. Mr. Lasagna. Lasano. I didn't have him. I know who you're talking about. So in his classes, he would give us prickly pears. Or uh, uh, what would they, Mexicans call it? A tuna. tuna. <laughs> ah, yeah, straight out of a sandwich. So now I'm getting some other fruit. My point was being just getting, let it just sit with but it But it tastes bit. more like, like orange soda now. I think it tastes more like But not like, like a, real orange, like orange soda. You know how that... Orange soda tastes, yeah, tastes like fake. This is what orange In tastes authentic. like, but then you eat an orange and like that's not orange at all. It doesn't like. I'm tasting more orange than I would imagine pear, but it doesn't taste like a regular orange. It tastes it, like maybe I guess that might be a, the prickly pear blood orange thing because a prickly pear is, is is like a squishy, soft, <clears throat> uh, naturally sweet but tart. So where does the fruit. prickliness? Coming. So you know how cactuses have needles? These little fruits have cacti, fucking millions of tiny. It's more like they're like you know how peach fuzz is. Peaches have fuzz. Yeah. Um. So it's like less than the fuzz, but it's like needles. But they don't hurt. But you'll get them caught in your skin, and they'll be on you for like a couple days. It's less than a fuzz. But needles. It's, yeah, very prick, And that's the prickly part. So it's like a pear with, like, five o'clock and shadow. And the shitty part is, like, you have to t- take the skin off. So you're going to get them all over your hand unless you use a glove. But it's kind of hard to peel. Interesting. You know, oh, it's- the inside reminds me a lot of a kiwi, the look-wise. Like, kind of like that texture. Hmm. I love prickly pears. I think I'm going to <laughs> try to go find I'm some. like, I guess a... Uh- 
Because now that you're describing it, I think I may have had one at some point, not recently. It's but. in California. It's a more likely you have, but it's kind of like not found in grocery stores unless you go to like a Mexican market. Or I mean, we grew up in a very Mexican population. Mexican I mean, market, San Marcos, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Bonzel, mm-hmm. San Diego. That was around. <laughs> That's that was around. Rodeos is right there mm. uh, by. Uh, Why are you saying rodeo weird? <laughs> We're in for a wild ride, buddy. Sam's a racist. <laughs> what? Nothing. Rodeo, a radio. Rodeos, radios, rodeos. It's a shack. It's shack nah, on the side. Radio a shack's radio, gone. radio shack. A rodeo gone. shack. Ro- rodeos. Anyways, <laughs> but I'm tasting something, but it tastes like a lot like orange soda, which uh, to me it's pretty pretty good taste. I do like orange soda taste. I don't know if it smells more like the name that it tastes, but it doesn't taste bad. Yeah. I would say it overall took, it good. It took me a while to get into the, the other flavor other than IPA. Though. You got to sit with it. Yeah. Give it give it a little This time. might have been a beer we should have done like the little tasting swirl thing. No, nope, never again. On your own time, David. I'm not I'm not doing that. <laughs> it's good. I'll say I'll say uh more positive to say about it than bad. Oh, like it does t- when you swirl it, it does taste a little different. When you what? Good. Swirl it in your mouth and then do a taste. It tastes you swirl refreshing. it? <clears throat> but yeah, I really like prickly pear, so I might be putting more into it that it doesn't have enough prickly pear. But good. It's good. <clears throat> Very good. I don't, I'm not sure Summer Lovin's a good name. Amazing. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Because it's like my a, favorite thing to ever pass Isn't my this lips. the guy from... Huh? That, what, that character Johnny Depp played? You mean... You well, mean that that Hugo Weaving played? <laughs> no, not the Red Skull. It's the Red Skull, man. No, it is a um, literal Red Skull in a Tommy movie? Bahama cap. He does where he's like in Vegas and totally drugged up and trash all the time. Why do I keep saying Lost it's, in Las Vegas? I, I is it Lost it, in Las Vegas? No, it's uh, it's Lost. It's, it's not Lost in translation. It's not Lost in. Lo- it's like something with Lost. I, that was the first. It's I know I know exactly. Like actor, the, I know exactly author. what the DVD cover looks like. It's, it's like the, that the big head and, big and the glasses, glasses and with like the. He's tripping out. It's, he plays that famous author who killed himself. Something in Las Vegas. Yeah. but <laughs> Scream at us all you want. That, we don't know off the top of our head. Yeah. I've only seen that movie once. I haven't seen it in a long time. I, I, I just remember when he goes in the I hotel talking to like, like the a, major dean. He's like, hey, can you? And he's like looking. like really hard to watch. I'm like, this, I feel like you have to be on something to watch the movie to understand all of it. I think I was just too young when I watched it. I watched it like two, three years ago. And I was like, this is weird. Like. I have to watch it again. It's, yeah. Hmm. Anyways, let's get to the topic today. <clears throat> and this is... Um, another another discussion topic yeah. from this site that we apparently love a lot. Printdiscuss.com. Humor conversation questions. They have a warm-up question, which uh, it's a loaded question. I don't think we'll we'll do it, but no, we'll... No, do it. The, I, uh, I say do it. What do you think? That's a loaded question. I, it's not a lo- Like, you don't have to say, what like... What makes you laugh? Things that make me laugh. Okay, okay. go ahead. Warm-up question is things just, that make I, you laugh. I answered it. Or what makes you laugh? Funny things. Stuff that tickles my funny bone. Yeah, but I think they want to be more specific. That's why nope, I said loaded that's, question. Nope, uh, that's my warm-up. Uh, just jokes, vague. Jokes. Bad acting <laughs> makes me laugh. It's a... Uh, really stupid plots. B-movies. Insidious makes me laugh. The movie... Mm-hmm. That's about it. Uh, I'll say it's there's not really a, a set formula for what makes me laugh. Like it's, I don't know. It's more of like a gut feeling to like a visual or auditory thing. I don't know. It just like when something's funny, you just kind of know, and then your body just reacts. Question number one: Who is the funniest person you know? What makes them funny? Like in our personal you lives, you know, you have to know them. I don't know, David. Sometimes you're funny. I was about to say Sam's funny. Not, not all his jokes are like knock him out of the park, but he makes an attempt to make a lot of jokes. So it feels like there are a lot of funny ones, but there are also some that are like you uh-huh. didn't have to say that. I don't. That's <laughs> but he's but he's just saying it. It's yeah, him. no, it's not like I know when I'm trying to be funny. It's not for the sake of the people around me. It's for yeah. me. And <laughs> like, sometimes those jokes don't land, but sometimes they're very, they're I very think, funny. I think more often than not, I think I'm funny, but that sounds sad. Yeah, but I'll say Sam just because 
You know what? He's probably the only person. I'm really trying to think of the people I know. He is probably one of the more funnier persons. I, of the people I know, Daniel Freya is pretty close, but he, it not he's not doing it on purpose because he just has. You just did a full name <laughs> drop of some a personal a personal friend because he's a fool. Oh, <laughs> uh, I you know what I think uh, of of the people I am around fairly often. I don't think a whole lot of them make an like a conscious effort to. Tr- to you know, try to be funny. I know there are some that are just like naturally funny, but it's never like a hundred percent of the time. Yeah, I don't know. I'll say I'll say David because you're probably one of the faces I see the most often, and you make me laugh sometimes. So, but it's like I don't know. Sometimes the the reason why you make me laugh is not like me normally and Sam a thing. have some dark jokes that we tell, but we like to be a little political. David likes to be in political. the public. No, they, you don't go out and say racist stuff. I don't go out. You, you don't say racist stuff on Instagram or Twitter. Say... That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Number two, go ahead. Um, okay. Are you good at telling jokes? If not, why not? I would say like the standard joke, like you have to have a setup and a punchline. No. I would say I'm not good at that because I just can't think of them or remember them because a joke you really have to say a certain way you can't fuck it up 90 percent of a joke is delivery yeah so it's like i don't know if i'm good at that so yeah well okay all right but like expand that a little bit like rather than just a standard joke no. like are you good at no. saying funny things no. no well i think that's different joke and funny things is different because i can repeat something i heard on the office and it's funny sure it is David. or reno 911 because it's funny but a joke is like a good setup. I was like, keep in mind, I am, I am fact checking you with what I observe I'm, a lot of the time. I'm telling you. I was like, I don't know, man. Recounting jokes from like things you've seen is a lot. I don't know. It's a skill. It's not. It's I don't know. It's not authentically funny. It's because like your half of it is like, like it's is ob- like weighing. It's it, observing. No, it's just like you're just recounting a thing, and you're kind of relying on whoever you're saying it to has seen it also. I mean, so like, but, oh. like when I watch up watch like comedy com, comic standards it's like they make it relatable because it's like most of the time we've been in those situations or had that situation or experience i'd say there's a bit of insight involved no I'm i not, mean we're yeah. just telling straight jokes but I um, mean, obviously if it's a t- totally different like jokes we have here in america are way different from jokes that mm-hmm. people tell in australia because it's just like a different it's a cultural thing yeah life and geopolitical you know, you make it. <laughs> all of that was just not funny, right? <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, As he laughs, I think. I don't know. I'm I'm okay some of the time. Like, I don't know. I like the stuff I like to say. Most of the time is pretty deadpan, kind of like literal. Like I pretend like I don't know what I'm doing, but I do kind of things. And I think sometimes it lands. Like I know my girlfriend gets real frustrated with me sometimes because she's like, I don't know if you're joking or not right now. But then that makes me like <laughs> that makes me kind of laugh internally. But I, you know, you got to be like, if you're trying to sell a joke, you can't like let it show in your face, or you do, and that's part of your comedy. So until after the punchline, it just depends. It depends on you, your kind of humor. And then you bring it back three jokes later, or or like <laughs> weeks or years. <laughs> then it's an inside joke. So are you saying you're good at telling jokes? I think. Mm, not necessarily. Okay. I think I have my moments. But like an actual, like just telling it like a knock-knock joke or something like that. Like I mean, we don't have to go knock-knock joke, but... But you know, like a standard, like a formulaic kind of joke. I don't think I'm good at the joke. delivery, so I'll say no. I think I, sometimes I could do it. It just depends how well I know a joke. Go. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Number three. <laughs> when you look for a boyfriend or girlfriend, are you attracted to men or women who can make you laugh? Oh, you asking me? I thought you. I mean, I was saying the question, but if you want to answer it first, go ahead. Okay. Um. Like. I mean, yeah, but I would say like just going beyond like partners, like boyfriend girlfriend, like just. I tend to like if. If it's like someone I don't know and they like show me they have a sense of humor, I think I'm more likely to get along with somebody like. Like, just not even just romantically, like, just, like, as friends. Like, I'm like, oh, they have a sense of humor. I'm going to gravitate towards that person. It, should it match your sense of humor, though? I mean, it helps. 
Okay. If I it, maybe if it like it doesn't necessarily one hundred percent hit with me, but if I think it's kind of funny, like I'm more likely to get along with a person than than not. But if we're talking partners, then yeah, like, like I don't know if I would say I'm attracted to women more if they are funny. I think it helps. It factors in for me. I don't me. know if it factors into me. It's I because it, for me, it's like you're your own person. Uh-huh. So it's like we don't have to find the same things funny. You don't have to be funny. You don't even have to find me funny or vice versa. Um, but I guess I would be more attracted if they actually had a sense of humor. And it could be their own sense of humor. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to match mine. Um, it'd be kind of weird to not have a sense of humor. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I can... I can't imagine myself being partnered up with somebody that's just like stone faced. Yeah, like, I don't think they have to be laugh. funny, but a sense of humor, any sense of humor, doesn't really matter. I'll say a general sense of humor will bump you up, but if like it's a humor that I can relate to, like that's an extra couple points. Yeah, like, I'm more likely. And to... I'm and I'm. It doesn't matter to me. Well, that's yeah. Well, you're not as funny, Dave. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't a good joke. I laughed. I don't care. I don't give a shit if you laughed. It made me laugh, so. But that's not funny. You want to go to number five? You're, number four? You're Ooh. a good friend, David. <laughs> yeah, being honest. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> no, lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> you're ugly. I don't know. People listening, I don't I don't know if we're funny or not, but I mean, like. But it doesn't matter because you don't care. I don't. I don't. But I kind of. <laughs> I don't, I don't care, fucking but care, but if but I hear or read something... Tell me that I am. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a sociopath? I, you know, who bit. knows, David? <laughs> who knows? Sociopath Anonymous. Okay, well, I think we, I think we Number four. that. Number four. Um, and and just, to, just to note, there are 18 questions in total. We are shooting for half of them, so yes. nine or so. And we're, it, this might seem and a little we are f- almost halfway. I was through. like, and this might seem a little bit rushed, but there, this is with purpose. So you don't have to say that. I don't, no. but I will because <laughs> and I'll edit it out. Your dick right now. <laughs> your good friend. Um, where, where are we at? Four. Yeah. All right, number four. Now I have to edit it. Out. <laughs> You're such a dick. Um, <clears throat> number four. Are men funnier than women, or vice versa? I think humor is one of the things where it's. Uh, if you find, if wow, nice uh, bodily noises, yeah, um, it's I think fifty fifty. It's one of those things that's very split. I don't think men are funnier than women. I don't think women are funnier than men. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's gender jokes, I guess I would find men jokes more funny because I relate to them and I can understand them. But there are some women jokes that are. I guess you can be, you can assume or generalize it, mm-hmm. but I don't think, but depending on gender, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean like, okay. I think right now, I think the pat. I think we're, it's gotten better, but like, ev- like everything else, men have been dominating, you know, these male dominated jobs, hobbies, careers, but that's just because how the system's set up to be a tad bit sexist. Okay. Well. For me, I will say, not factoring in like professionals and stuff. Uh, I think I, I think I touched on this like a couple weeks ago, or how whenever I touched on it last on this podcast. But I'm like, I think men and women are just as capable of being funny. I don't as, think there's a like yeah. it's not it's not level of funniness is not dependent on your gender at all. It's just you're funny or you're not funny or you're somewhere in the middle. It's a gray area. I will say I've probably seen more men stand up comedians. I was gonna or say than females. Yeah, but but that I is, think it's because they just don't get the shot. I think it's that is an industry kind of thing where it's you know where it's like the gender stuff is like slow to balance out because men kind of have been dominating for so long. But I will say like in my personal life, um, and this is this is this is a, I mean it doesn't quite tie into what I was just saying, but I think personally I more men I know are funnier than women, but that's just from what I've observed. That's like that's just the based off the people I know, uh, but uh, that does that does not mean that men in general are funnier than women. It's just like I don't know. Yeah. I and uh, and kind of go, to go along with what David was saying, like uh, I think part of like at least what shapes kind of my humor, like that gender based kind of humor. Like I don't 
like I think it's kind of funny, like like jokes for men, jokes yeah. for women, like they're they're kind of funny, but that's not really like my shtick. Like I like more like observational kind of like g- g- <laughs> I was gonna say genderless comedy but even like those non-gender but, ones they're still coming from the point of view of you know yeah so but it's not a like more relatable well i guess like what i'm saying is like i like no i yeah i know i totally understand what you're saying i was gonna say like like a good dick joke is funny but it's not like yeah. my cup of tea all the time 50 or, dick jokes versus you know three or four you know experience jokes are the experience jokes are yeah. probably funnier they're much and they won't get boring because the dick joke is always about a dick and an experience is always different I, I prefer like experience kind of yeah. jokes. No, I, I get it. But um, yeah, uh, uh, men, women, everyone can be funny. Yeah, I'll say this. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's just like we see more men as comedians, but I think it's getting better. I mean, if you're talking about the industry, like that's. You I know, think it's getting better. There's Especially a slant with like internet, Instagram, YouTube. Like everyone's yeah. able to do their thing. But uh, this it's kind of like what we mentioned in our the part two of our gaming stuff where it's just like there's a little imbalance but it's leveling out it's just you know men have been you know a little more prominent and because it goes back to kind it's of easier like, for them to make yeah, it it's yeah. and it's like how people are raised and oh you shouldn't do that but it's changing yeah. so we're excited and to see good, it change because there are plenty of hilarious women out there yeah mm-hmm. brianna she's fucking funny who brianna brianna yeah brianna our friend's wife Brianna. <laughs> yeah, she's funny. Yeah, she is. Fu- and Our she, friend. And she just acts funny, too. Brianna Buckles. I'm very funny. Pretty sure with, she... Without trying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It just kind of comes to her naturally. Mm-hmm. Number five, do you laugh when other people suffer misfortune? Mm-hmm. Is it funny when someone falls over? When is it okay to laugh at another person, and when is it wrong? All right. So, <laughs> it is funny when someone falls over. In the context of a funny movie mm-hmm. or funny joke or a funny act. If someone falls over and gets hurt, probably not that funny. This is just David's opinion, by the way. Yeah, because Sam's an asshole. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think if someone falls over and they're laughing, let's laugh with them because mm-hmm. it was funny and they're okay with it. It might be like they're embarrassed. But um, but if someone falls over and gets seriously injured, it's definitely not funny because uh, getting hurt is not cool. Uh, but misfortune is such a fucking big word. Is it though? It, it is because misfortune to me sounds like you lost a million dollars. That is kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> but like you, you were like robbed, um, and you know, small mistakes are can can be funny in the in the context of a joke. All right, and uh, all right, following up off of humorous Hitler over here. Um, I mean, I said it was funny. Hitler. Uh, <laughs> no, um, see, that was a good joke. Yeah, thank you for for was, everyone that listening that joke. doesn't understand. That was my joke last night. <clears throat> but um, I'll say, uh, like, okay, I peel back the curtain for myself a little bit. I don't know if I've mentioned it here, but a large majority of like my YouTube watch is, watching habits is, is just on the FBI just watch huge. List. Yeah, exactly. I'm on some list somewhere, but um. Uh, uh, I like watching. I'm a big. I'm a big advocate for large fail compilations. Like, I don't know something about people falling over, getting into accidents, or just like, just not being super aware of what they're doing is brings me great joy. And, um, but like David said, I think as long as someone doesn't die or get very very seriously injured, I'm okay with laughing. Like that one where the guy jumps. Oh, no, the girl jumps into the frozen lake, and uh-huh. it's still frozen, and uh-huh. she just fucking slams. Uh-huh. That's funny to me. Mm-hmm. But if I heard that she, like, like totally fucked up her back, and she's, uh-huh. like, like bedridden, it probably isn't that funny. Now I feel bad. Well, yeah. I feel sorry. So there, uh, there's a, I don't know, it's a bit of a, a roll of the dice. Like, it's kind of like, um, it's really context dependent a lot of the time, like, like I look at those, it this way. Most of those fail videos are like, they're funny because no one really got that hurt. But there are some where it's like, that person probably had like to go to the hospital. Like, they'll cut away and you're like, I mean, that looked pretty dicey what yeah. just happened. Like, like, I laugh, but I feel like questionable about that laugh. jumping off the roof into a pool, but you hit the concrete. Too. Or like jumping off a roof into like, I don't know, like a... Another roof. <laughs> into like a helicopter <laughs> propeller. No. Um, <laughs> no, like, I... I 
there are exceptions, but I would say generally, if you see a thing and and it's like someone's error and like they're able to laugh about it, like Go gold laugh, yeah. golden opportunity, green card, green light, whatever, green <laughs> card. Yeah, <laughs> you can laugh. You can't um, laugh about green card. No. Green. <laughs> I'll laugh. I'll laugh about colors and cards if I want, David. I don't care. Um, but uh, so and then like if it's like an immediate laugh they give, golden. But if it's like something like. Like, you're like, okay, well, they're not laughing now, but they might laugh later because it's like a hindsight. Like, you have to sit with it for a while. Like, I would still laugh. But, like, you know, when you're teetering into, like, serious injury, then it's like, eh, yeah, don't know. Uh, also, it might be our gut reaction to laugh just because we're brought up. We see movies. We see, like, comedy movies. Mm-hmm. A lot of people fall over. Like, yeah. we're just, we are, wow, it's not trained, but we are conditioned to laugh at that. Well, it's like sometimes like... um, And there's nothing wrong with you at your gut reaction to laugh. You know, like um, sometimes like... It's kind of like... Yeah, gut reaction laugh. It's kind of like, you know, sometimes when someone... I, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but like someone asks you like... Not all the time, but sometimes it'll be like a political question. And you'll... The first, your first reaction would be to give the answer that you're taught to give. But then like you sit with it and then like you think about it and then you give like your honest answer... I don't know if that's something you've ever dealt with. Or... I, I mean, go honest or shut up, I guess. All right, David. To me. Well, then it's like I'm not talking to anybody. But um, like like your gut reaction may be to laugh, You're but then like... To hundreds of people I, right now. I'm talking to myself right now. Right now, as I'm speaking, <laughs> this is for me. people. Um, I guess my point being, it's just, you know, uh, yes, I do laugh at other people's misfortune. I still don't like as the ba- word of misfortune, though. It just... There are levels mistakes. that I feel I like mistakes, are okay yeah. to laugh at. Mistakes also sound fucked up, like someone fucked I'll up I'll laugh at, at work, mistake. Yeah. I laugh at myself when I make mistakes. And then other times when I make mistakes, that might be your gut they wake me up in the middle of the night and I have to scream about it into my pillow. I'm like, like, why did you do that? Like, waiting the bed. fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just a little more involved in that sometimes. But... Or wet dreams, you know. <laughs> why are those your go-to? <laughs> Speaking from experience. They're pretty funny. I don't know if I ever had a wet dream. Uh, that's not. This is not the place for that. <laughs> that's next. Let's go. Week. <laughs> Keep going. Um, no, I read the last one. You, Did you? Yeah. Okay. Number six. Um, number six. Laughter is the best medicine. All italics. What do you think about this idea? I mean, it isn't because it's not, not a medicine. But it does, laughter does make you feel good, and feeling good is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't work for everyone, especially depending on the situation or, you know, the experience or how angry or sad or mad or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, laughing makes you feel good. So you get those good chemical reactions in you and you feel better. Mm. It Um, it doesn't hurt to laugh. So I would say medicine is the best medicine. But if we're just going off of... cancer here. (laughs) Or it might. You know, there have been studies. Who knows? I don't care to do the research. What was that movie with Robin Williams? Which one? That... Where he's One where he's a, do- a clown doctor. doctor. Well, he's, he's a he's, he's a, doctor, a doctor, and he he goes way different. Like, These children are gonna die. It's like, well, might as well make them feel good. Yeah. And then he dies. No, his the his girlfriend dies in it, right? The girl. Spoiler alert for that movie. That we movie can't is remember. Like Twenty years ago. Hey, man. Robin. No. It's okay. We don't need to remember. Why do I keep trying to say Doctor Giggles? I know that's something else. I don't know what that is. That's fine, David. That it's better that you like don't know. A porn video or something? What? Yes. Red tube? Shh. What? <laughs> uh, anyway, I was saying laughter. Uh, medicine is the best medicine, but laughter certainly can make you feel better about a given thing. So I would say, like, it. it's not bad. It Like, I think it, it would help to have a sense of humor yeah. about things or just being able to laugh at things. But as for genuinely making you better eh, debatable feel good it makes you feel good and that sometimes helps with other things yeah a mood if you if you can have if it elevates your mood then why not i mean it's like the mental is just as stronger than the physical like yeah. it's all mental so yeah i can see the merit behind it but obviously medicine is the best medicine number seven how do you feel about clowns scary or funny I mean, like, okay, like actual clowns. I don't. I mean, like, right now, I get they're funny. I don't know. Like, 
So I guess I, <laughs> in my adult life, I have not been around clowns much. Even and like, even as a kid, I would say like, I've never really found them funny. I found them interesting. I always, but yeah, I didn't find them funny. I didn't find them scary because I didn't really watch a lot of scary movies as a kid. Um, I feel bad for you. <laughs> and yeah, they, I just, I guess I can see why children find them funny because of the, you know, different colors and they don't look, you know, how we look normally. It's just different. Yeah, it hits the synapses or something. <laughs> There's some science behind it, but so like I've I've always looked at clowns as not just like instantly funny, but I do understand them as like entertainers. Whether that's actually like involves talent or not, like I understand they're doing something. But like so let me see. Every, like, like this is like this is there's there's a little bit of an open ended question because like if we're talking about real life clowns, I mean I don't find them particularly funny. But movie clowns, regardless of whether they're supposed to be funny or not, I think I find them funnier more times than I don't. Most times, scary clowns just say really funny shit. But like like okay, like classic example, like the the so like the '90s version it? of it that version of pennywise looks, as done by like tim curry is the funniest fucking thing he looks pretty funny to funny looking so like, funny acting it, like i think overall he's funny in that movie but when like they so like <laughs> i think tim curry in general is just hilarious in that movie. he's a funny actor yeah but like he's not meant to be funny but like and like whenever they do him up like with like makeup or whatever like like he's got like fangs or whatever in any given scene like I'm like that's kind of nothing but like when it's just him doing his thing is the funniest shit like there's a scene in that movie and this is a little bit off topic but not really like where he's like tormenting one of the dudes in like the library and like he's the only one that can hear him and everyone else is just like they're like what is what's this dude's problem he's like oh, i got to do i got to contact so and so and he's like talking from like the balcony and there's this scene that kills me every time where he's like do you have prince albert in a can and he whips his leg over just like there's something about the way he does it it's like his physicality just cracks me up every time and i'm like i know this is supposed to be scary but it's so fucking funny <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, I think they're funny. Yeah, I don't know if they're funny. I find them more funny. Uh, more oftentimes, they're it's mostly they're funny as opposed to nothing else. I would say like delivery too. Like if you're a good clown, yeah, that probably would be funny. A, sad, a bad clown is just sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. 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 It is. If I'm totally honest, I find mimes more interesting than clowns, but. That's a different thing. Interesting. Just, you know, just a little, little, little nugget for you guys. All right. <clears throat> um, ooh. Um, number eight is stand-up comedy popular in your culture? Who's your favorite stand-up comedian? All right, David, I'll let you take the floor. Uh, stand-up comedy popular in your culture. Uh, I think it's a. Uh, it's popular. I just don't think it's as big as it sh- can be. I'll say it. it Stand up, co- stand up comedy has always been like I don't want to say fairly it's niche because it's really not it's not niche. niche. Like enough people like listen to and follow and are aware of people in but the industry. I think it could be bigger. It's not like so. Stand up comedy is never it's it's always been a thing, but it's never been like as big as like a really good band or like a good yeah, movie. Yeah. Like it's always been like kind no of like one, off to the side. Fifty thousand, sixty thousand people aren't going to see a stand up comedian. Like like for one like. Yeah, it's not like they're like ever. But if Jim Carrey did that, maybe. But he has made some enemies there's... with his talk about autism. Uh, so for, for example, I see. So there is a certain amount of celebrity that yeah. is involved in the stand-up thing, but like, it's it's always been a thing. It's just never been like the biggest thing. Yeah, and so that's going I, back to even like the seventies, sixties, when 50s. it was like they were on talk shows. Yeah, like, when people were pioneering. Yeah, standing in front of people with a microphone. But, um, the re- R- I- I- IRL stream. <laughs> but um, uh, I think it's popular. It's just, I, I think to me it could be more popular. But, I mean, like, with the help of Comedy Central and even now Netflix sponsoring and paying out to do these filmed ones, mm-hmm. uh, that's awesome. I think it's giving them a lot. So, how do you, how do you feel about Cena Comedy? Do you listen to a lot or? I'll watch it on YouTube if there's a playlist, but I'm not going out and looking for the newest one every time. 
So is do you have like a favorite right now? Like a or current all favorite? Time. Uh how about how about like current favorite and then if you can think of an all time? It's I have an all time favorite stand up mm-hmm. video collection. But the, we'll, we'll we'll talk the, about that. The original Latin Kings of Comedy. The uh-huh. one with George Lopez. Um where he does the whole white person bit basically the whole time. <laughs> Duncan. Duncan. Oh my gosh. John Mulaney is really funny right now too. He's like a trending to one me, for you. I mean he's trending to I think everyone. And mm-hmm. I think because he's more relatable than most stand up comedy comedians. I'll have to disagree with you, but that's just my opinion. But he he's good. He's more normal. Mm-hmm. Cause they're like you look at some comedians and you're like, this guy has this persona that mm. it looks a little more mm-hmm. not like a normal Joe. And mm-hmm. I think John, I mean, the the one that Netflix, the one that just came on Netflix, it's overdone. But mm-hmm. I think it was purposefully overdone. Mm-hmm. Um, but his older ones, he kind of feels like just like suburban white kid from <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> and he and he is. Mm-hmm. Um, but now he's a little more celebrity. Mm-hmm. Um He's in the zeitgeist. Yeah, he's he's, he's a very popular right now. But mm-hmm. I think his older ones, it was just more, I think, oh, this guy's just a normal guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his jokes are, to me, they're not, you know, not like, I'm trying to find the word for it. Because, like, I love some of the comedians that, like, are so harsh mm-hmm. and, like, really fucking point fun of. and But then John Lee, like, like his assembly joke is just like <clears throat> so stupid because mm-hmm. it's like we were in high school and I get assemblies, but it's just like, like you, like do you, you f- could come up with something else, but he chose an assembly like mm-hmm. as a kid and it's like so stupid, but funny mm-hmm. the way he does it. Cause it's like, yeah, we had assemblies, mm-hmm. but then there's like, so he does a lot of, he jumps around his mm-hmm. time or like the Bill Clinton as a kid that mm-hmm. like, that's just like, it's interesting, but more or i guess it's more family i mm-hmm. guess you could have your kids listen to john mulaney especially with his new He's getting- show mm-hmm. i guess his comedy is for everyone it's more of like a general appeal yeah he because he's not you know cussing out which i fucking love because that original line keen's a comedy is just like <laughs> i mean george lopez goes into a bit about mm-hmm. just like eating out mm-hmm. <laughs> some chick <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's like it's like a jungle like i got my <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny, but then John Lane, I think, yeah, he just re- reaches out a wide variety of ages that, mm-hmm. you know, can be listened to. Like, uh, what's it called? Like, uh, you don't need that 18 and up button on his... Parental advisor. Yeah. Explicit. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess that's... I Because he has to try a lot harder, mm-hmm. I feel. I think it's harder to, to play clean than it is dirty, because dirty well, jokes dirty are easier so easy, to say. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I, I appreciate laugh. him uh-huh. a lot more right now. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen his new little kid show, but I'm, I don't think. Oh, I'm, that, yeah, that ruck, what did I say? Rucksack kids, that something. lunch bag, yeah. lunch sack. Good for him for like doing this stuff. And, and I hope he doesn't come out later that he's like, cause you know, right now it's like comedy comedians are all coming out as being predator, a lot of, predators. A lot of people getting in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, for me, different than David, I've been pretty, I don't know, something about, like, I think when I was in high school, like, I think, like, the popular comedian at the time was probably, like, Dane Cook was, like, this shit back, well, you know, back when, you, when you're when you fresh into a thing and you funny. hear something for the first time. But then it came out that he, like, stole, like, some of his jokes. Well, I don't, I don't give, well oh, that's a whole other thing. But anyway, <laughs> he was, like, he was the he was the hot thing at the time, and that was kind of, like, my gate, I'll say that was, like, my gateway comedian into like comedy stuff and like ever since i've i've always been like on the lookout for like uh like uh you know just like talented comedians up and comers all that kind of stuff so i've been pretty consistent with like checking in on like stand-up routines and anytime i go into sam's car it's either i'm constantly listening the music to... of the week or a uh, comedian and I'll be honest, some of the jokes are funny, but some of them are like, uh... Well, okay, it's, it's not, a lot of a lot of the stuff I look for in a stand-up com- comic Sam routine is... Sam does listen to, like, smaller known comedians that only people that listen to, com- like, comedians would know. Like, less mainstream yeah, so like, comedy. Yeah, so someone who doesn't really do it, they wouldn't know who they are. So, like, uh, like some of, like, 
like some of my all time favorites. Like I'm a huge uh, fan of Bill Burr. He's just like he's like he tells it like it is. He's kind of an asshole, but it's like it's it kind of endears you to him a little bit. He's kind of got like he's a little bit like uh, kind of like how Chappelle is a little bit, where he's just a straight shooter, and yeah. that's kind of like the basis for their comedy. And they make like outrageous, just like <laughs> just observations. And you're like, okay, like. You shouldn't say that, but there's truth to what you're saying, so I think it's funny. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's probably one of the big ones. Before he got in trouble, and I know you'd agree with me, it would probably be like Louis C.K. Yeah. was a huge one, and like and like not to comment on like any of that, but like it was just the kind of comedy where it's like it felt like they weren't trying to be funny a lot of the time. He just, but told, it was just talked like about his sad life. It's just like it's just very relatable and like it's like it seemed like no effort, yeah. but you know, like just, they just come these, off as naturally these, funny. These really, be, like the great comedians are like practicing the craft, mm. like day in and day out. Yeah, like it's not like they're just naturally. Mm. They practice and practice and practice. And practice. I mean, there are like naturally funny people out there, but like the people that do it for a living, like I, you have to work, yeah. <laughs> Even, regardless of how naturally funny you are. Mm. But like. um yeah, so those those two were big ones for me. Um, another couple, like John Mulaney. I think John Mulaney's hilarious. Um, it's very, it, I don't want to say he's it's smart because it isn't like the smartest like like comedy out there. Uh-huh. It's just so like broad and uh-huh. like. So he's like, so it's weird because like he can hit a joke, which is like like really like just like everybody can find it funny, but then he can also get really specific. Where it's like maybe like it's a joke for only like a handful of I people love in the, the crowd. Fucking college one. Uh huh. The like, I gave you eighty thousand dollars and you spent <laughs> yeah. it already. Yeah. And you want more money? <laughs> yeah. So certainly, certainly yeah. he's he's like, hilarious. College people would know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> like I so big time. Like I agree with David. I like John Mulaney a lot. Uh, a couple other ones. I'll just say real quickly. Uh, like one of the ones I've been listening to pretty regularly for like the on and off the past few years matt bronger um he's really funny something about his delivery it just it just kills me every time i hear that guy talk and um so he's one i'll say another one uh another older one i liked a lot i used to like mitch hedberg before he passed away because he did he was one of those one-liner kind of comedians but he always like it he kind of would just brush him off almost mm-hmm. like he would like he like it almost felt like he didn't register what he was saying but you're like Dude, that's fucking hilarious yeah. what you're saying right now. Um, oh, what's her name? Wong? Ali Wong? She's, Ali Wong's pretty funny. Her delivery is... Mm-hmm. Like, you'll see people that have been doing it for, like, 20, 30 years, and her delivery is, like, a mm. hundred times better. The way her facial expression... Mm. And, you know, she does the race card a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, like, you know, true. And But she uses it to her huge advantage. Like, mm-hmm. it's just... I love her fucking like. Oh, I I married like a smart person hoping to be the stay at home <laughs> wife, and mm. now he's the stay at home husband, oh, and I'm on the stage, and she's like pregnant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're just like, wow. <laughs> that was and like like going up to now. That's like that. Her past two specials have just she's been pregnant both times. Yeah. So that's kind of funny. She was in. Uh, I just uh, she was in Birds of Prey. I saw her, and she was uh, one of the detectives. She's, she's doing work. Yeah, she's. she's busy. I, I I I would say. Before COVID, she probably would have been in a couple more movies, mm-hmm. but now we don't know how that's going to end up. She's funny, mm-hmm. um, but uh, but going back to the gender thing, it's like some of the jokes is like I don't I don't get it because it's she's talking about you know what a woman would go through, like a woman experience yeah. kind of thing, and it's like, but if her delivery is funny, I'll laugh because mm-hmm. it's funny. Um, well, last last person I'd probably mention for this one, uh, uh, if. Anyone's listened to stand-up comedy in like the past 20, 25 years. Another big one that I would recommend if you haven't heard of them is Brian Regan. He's one of those clean comics where it's like everybody could listen to him, but it's just his delivery is super stupid and funny. He he kind of plays it off like he's like the big dumb guy, but he's got like a heart of gold kind of thing. He's one of those. Um, but very funny. I would recommend listening to him. Um, Number nine. Yeah. Question last nine. one. Yeah, last question. I think I read the last one. Oh, is it me? Yeah. Um, is being funny a natural ability, or can a person learn to be funny? How could a person become funnier? Uh, I think it is a natural ability, but you people can learn to be funny. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 
good actors, learn jokes and learn delivery. Like we we've been saying it like this whole time, delivery, the showmanship mm-hmm. is a lot into comedians. Um, how they look, how they portray themselves, how they stand, like you know, it goes all into that. But I I think could a I a, na- a funny person who is naturally funny and learns to like be a really fun comedian is is gold Mm -hmm. and i think that says more than if no one who isn't someone who isn't not who isn't naturally funny can learn to be funny i just don't think it'll be as funny as someone who has been naturally funny and has crafted themselves i think uh you uh natural funniness is something that you can have you could be born funny but it's definitely something you could learn um i also think it's dependent on the kind of funny you're aiming for because you could be there's so many varieties of of ways you can be funny you could be deadpan funny you could be sarcastically funny you could be just straightforward funny but it's definitely something like with practice um it's just kind of like trial and error see what Mm -hmm. what works what doesn't um i just think i think some people it's just it's easier for them to to find that line and just know know what to yeah, say to get yeah. that reaction and, they want. and it's practice practice you know mm-hmm. you practice and practice and practice um yeah how could a person become funny obviously practice practice yeah. practice like david said just research you know, practice it's like anything else try try things out uh find especially the, on different people find the formula that works for you find find what is funny to one person and then shop that around with different yeah. people because if you could find something that a bunch of people find funny then you're probably funny <laughs> <laughs> That's what funny is. And that's it for today. And we'll continue this next week. We'll do the next nine. Yeah. And yeah, thanks for watching and listening. Keep drinking, keep listening. Beer Me That Beer is a San Diego-based craft beer YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, and podcast show. And for more of us, check out BeardMeThatBeer.com. That's BeardMeThatBeer.com. If you want to reach out directly to us, email us at bmtbinfo at gmail.com. That's bmtbinfo at gmail.com.